Hello, Tim Vine here, and welcome back, unlikely, to Board of Numbers. And yes, this is the number two. We are talking about two on the dartboard and uh, all the different ways you can approach it, all the different ways you can hit it, and all the different ways it will crop up in a game of darts. I want to start today's episode by uh, correcting something that I said um, incorrectly in uh, episode one when talking about uh, the one segment. I said that on nine, to go out on nine, the pro would go one double eight. This is obviously nonsense. You go one double four. And I also said the pro would go to go out on five would go one double four. Again, what am I talking about? It's one double two. I think I was getting my scores mixed up with my doubles. It's irritating because I'm, you know, the one thing that I, I feel like you as the listener should expect from this is that there's some accuracy on the numbers for Pete's sake. Anyway, for Peter Wright's sake. Here we are. So, two. And uh, where is it on the dartboard? Well, the two is sandwiched neatly between the 17 and the 15. A slightly tricky angle, I would say. If you're going for a single two, I, I, I think it's a little bit, a little bit icky. It's just, it's not right, it's not high enough up like the 10 where it feels like you can, you can sort of nestle it in there. It just, it's got a bit of, uh, I don't know, it's there's, there's, some in, inherent danger around it with the 17 and the 15. And and I think that's is shown up actually by by the way it's used by the pros. Now, occasionally the pros will will use it to split up a shot. If for example, uh, someone is on 34 rather than going for double 17, which is 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 a bit of a mucky double. Um you might go uh, if you have three darts in your hand, you might go two for double 16 split the shot. Uh However, I don't know, I, I, I'm, if, if I'm in a pub, I would never do that. I always go straight for things. I'm the sort of person who goes straight for double 17, straight for double 19. I very, very rarely hit the six for double uh, 16 on double 19. I'm a go straight for it sort of chap. Um, again, strangely, and this I think is po po possibly, po 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 possibly speaks about the awkwardness of the position of the two, but rarely on 42... Will you see a pro go two for tops? Even if the pro loves tops, so someone like, I don't know, James Wade or Gerwin Price, they uh, they love double top, there's no doubt about it, double 20. But but I think even in those situations, they mainly go a 10 or a 6. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but, I mean, James Wade uh, is, is more likely of the two of them to go for the two for double top than Gerwin Price, I think. Uh, but what happens, of course, they don't put themselves in that situation that they left really on 42. If they want to go out and double top, they'll make sure they've found their way around to it uh, previous to that. Um, but it's the uh, the sensible shot for the amateur, of course, when on 42 is to go for a 10 or a 6 because it's a, 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 a two, two single segment or two segment singles, two segment, segment, uh, segment uh, Freud. So let's talk about doubles. Double two. Double two because of the position, and I think because of the fear of double one, can sometimes be a place where you get jammed. I've been jammed there before. You're on double two and, uh, you know, you you drop all three underneath, some way underneath, and you feel like you're frightened of it. And you may hear people talk about being frightened of a double. And uh, you know it when it's happening to yourself. You can feel it in your in your heart, I'm not really going for this because I'm scared of drifting into the two and leaving double one. And you've only got to do that a couple of times in a row and you can lose a leg. So best to go for things, as I say, properly go for them. Uh, the other thing you can do if you're, if supposing you're, you've been scoring well in your leg and uh, you're on four, so you're on double two and uh, your opponent maybe is back on one, six, two, which isn't a finish. Uh, you could go for the first one, miss the double two outside Second one, you're in single two. So you now have one dart for double one and your opponent's on one, six, two. Well, I think I would bust that. I don't know about you. I've just described myself as someone who goes straight for something. But in that situation, one dart in the hand. Um, yes, I could finish it, but they're not waiting on a finish themselves. I could finish it with one dart and double one. Um, and I could bust it, which would put me back to double two. But the scenario I'm possibly not after is that I send it higher and leave myself with double one next time round. Whereas at least double two, it feels like a more comfortable double to go for. So in that situation, it's fine to bust it. Now, the other interesting thing, um, well, one of the interesting things about uh, um, two is the treble. The treble two is one of the trebles on the board that is never aimed for deliberately in 501 play. 
And uh, we discussed one of them yesterday, treble one. Treble two is the same. Treble three, treble four, treble five, and treble six. You will not see in the whole of the world championships anyone going for any of those six trebles deliberately. Some of you, I hear you screaming at your listening device, say, well, what about treble seven? No one goes for that either. Well, I, uh, I disagree with you. Uh, James Wade, to mention him again, another, uh, to me- another one of the greats, uh, he, his name keeps coming up because he has interesting ways of finishing. I saw him go treble seven double top when he was on 61. So sometimes people will go for treble seven. It's rare, but it does happen. And it's only got to happen, as far as I'm concerned, once. In, and I've got to witness it. And, and for me to go, no, that's not one of those trebles. So as I say, one, two, three, four, five and six, those are trebles never aimed for deliberately in 501 play. And the treble two, as we're talking about twos, is one of them. So what scenarios are there? Um, when uh, you might still be listening to this. But what scenarios are there when you might hit treble two by mistake and you don't know what to do next? Well, let's talk about them, shall we? Let's imagine you're on 145. You go treble 20, you go for the treble 15 and you stray into the treble two. So with two darts left, you're on 85. Now you're on 79. Personally, I would go for treble 19 then to leave myself double 11. Probably I'm going to hit the single 19 to leave myself a two dart shot on 60 rather than go up for the treble 13, which would leave me tops next time. Because if you hit the single 13, you're on 66 and that isn't a two dart shot out on the next time round. So when you're on 151, what about that? So you're on 151, treble 20 with your first dart. These are good darts, by the way, if you're hitting the treble 20 first time each time. Treble 20 on the first dart, you drop down for the treble 17 and you stray into the treble two. There it is again. So you're on 91, now you're on 85. Now what you've got here that's rather nice is you've just hit treble two. The next treble along, treble 15, is what you need to hit in order to leave double top next time. So <clears throat> you just, just gently bring your arm round, go for that treble uh, 15 to leave tops. Um, and, and what about 83? Let's look at, uh, in fact, let's not do the two dark shots just yet. Let's look at another one, 147, which of course is a treble 20, treble 17, double 18. Uh, treble 20, you're, you're on 87, you throw treble two, you're now on 81. Well, you have a choice of uh, either the treble 15, which will lead you back to the double 18, or what I would probably do is go for the treble 19 to leave double 12 next time. And the two dart shots, 83, you're on the, you're going for straight for the, uh, straight for the jugular of, of treble, treble 17, and you hit the treble two. So that 83 becomes 77. You could go for, as I would probably do, uh, to try and attempt the treble 19 for double 10, or you might drift round and say to yourself, um, I'm going to try and be a little bit uh, uh, flash about this and go uh, treble 15 to leave double 16. 85, well, we've talked about a version of that coming down from 145. You've got two darts in your hand. You throw for the treble uh, 15 and you hit the treble two. You're on 79. And as I say, you go uh, either uh, treble 19 or treble 13, probably treble, treble 19. So there we are. Treble two is, is something that really only ever really occurs in a 501 game. Um, in situations where you were not wanting it to occur and you have to find a way out of it. And single two is something that you normally hit when you miss double two. And that's probably your scenarios. Um, not often picking up the single two for tops, but sometimes the, the, the better players, of course, can hit singles with their eyes closed. So if you're on 42 and you want to go for double top, of course you will go two for tops. I'd like to end this particular episode uh, talking about the number two with the greatest thing I ever witnessed on a dartboard concerning number two. Um, It was when I was working in an office in Croydon, the last proper job I ever had, and I'd organised a darts competition because I wanted to win it. And it meant that I had to sort of chase up people to play and no one who, you know, people were slightly being coerced into being involved in this tournament in the first place. And there was one match between Maureen Drinkwater and Graham Knapper, both managers in my department. Neither were very good at darts. And it came to a point where they were stuck on double one for so long that they both agreed, let's sort this out with highest score wins. Um, So Maureen threw first and she threw seven, two single ones and a five. Graham stepped up needing to beat seven. Now, I, to this day, I have no idea what he was trying to do. But in full view of all of us, he threw three perfectly grouped single twos, scored six and lost the match. I remember them landing. I remember the laugh and I remember my legs giving way 
when something's so funny that your knee joints can no longer hold you up. I guess you had to be there. But tomorrow I'll be here talking about the number three on the dartboard. A very interesting number to speak about. That is Board of Numbers and it's finished again.